Welcome back. This is part two of what we did to our coach during that 18 month of transitioning while we were going from living in a house to going full time. Details coming up on RV Street. This video is going to cover the battery bay, portable solar, propane tank, generator, under the chassis, and a couple of other things. I hope this information is informative and helpful to you guys. It covers a lot of important things. I'm going to begin this video in the battery bay. Battery bay, in my opinion, is another one of those really important areas, very often neglected. And when we first got this coach, it had a chassis battery and two interstate ha house batteries. You had to stay plugged in. You couldn't overnight one night with those batteries. So I decided to totally revamp this whole entire battery bay. I went with dual six volt golf cart batteries, Trojans, wired them in series to where now I have one big 12 volt battery. Then I ended up putting in an automatic watering system. And the way that works is when I need to check the water, I just reach in behind here and I have this hose right here and I hook up my, my uh, distilled water in a bulb and I pump water through this and it goes through all it goes through the first battery, into the second battery, and then down into the chassis battery. So I literally can check and fill the batteries with water in about three minutes. The next thing I did, as you can see back here in the back, this is the boogie light controller. And so this is wired into the batteries. I put a little adapter here where I could add more things. And then I changed the charging system. This coach comes with what they call a shoe marker 0.5 amp converter. When you plug into shore power, the power comes in from the post, goes to a converter, and it sends power and charges your house batteries. But it's a, it's a 0.5 amp ch charger. It was like a trickle charger. It would never do a deep charge. When I decided to do this to a six volt batteries and making one big 12 volt, I went ahead and changed out the um, converter to a new progressive um, four stage charger. And man, what a difference that thing makes. Uh, it takes these batteries, uh, the house batteries, uh, through all the different stages to keep them from sulfating, keeps them in a deep charge. It, it, it's just a, a very highly well-known company and a very good converter. Well, with that converter, I had to also install this shunt you can see it right there, this shunt. So anything now that I want to add to the batteries, for example, I wanted to install a good, accurate uh, battery monitor. I wanted to know exactly what I have as far as storage and volts uh, in the batteries. And I can also toggle through this and show how many amps I'm using, like if I turn on something and I want to know how many amps it's pulling, it's going to tell me right there. It tells me how fully charged the batteries are, and it tells me what the current uh, rating is right, right now. They're at 13.1 volts. Well, in order to hook that up to my new battery system, I had to install a shunt. Anything that you want to add to, to bring to the batteries, now goes to the shunt. And the reason you put it to the shunt is because now when you look at the, the monitor, the shunt will totally accumulate everything that's being used and everything that's being brought in, whether it's solar or whatever, and it'll give you an accurate reading. Needless to say, this took a lot of time to think this through and uh, you know what's gonna fit and how to wire it right and all of that, but uh, it all worked out. The last thing I did is I installed what they call a ample start. This is a little device that hooks up from my house batteries 
and it goes to my chassis battery. And what this does is as my house batteries are constantly being charged, whether I'm plugged in, whether the generator's on, or whether we're underway driving, these house batteries are being charged. Well, when, if you're sitting for a while, that chassis battery can lose power. It can lose some of its charge. So this ample start right there, what that does is it pulls just ever so slightly some power and just trickles into the chassis battery and keeps the battery, the chassis battery, totally topped off. One of the other things that I did when I reworked the battery bay is I installed an adapter uh, to be able to plug into a, a solar panel. We bought a 200 watt portable suitcase uh, solar panel which also has its own converter on it so I don't have to have any other additional hardware. I just fold that puppy out, plug it in right in there and that wired into my battery bay. I wired that adapter, that solar adapter, into this shunt so that when we use the solar panel and now it's pumping power into the batteries, it's accurately going to be reflected into the meter and I'll know exactly what I'm using and what I'm bringing in. Um, but we can boondock now with our tanks uh, the capacity of our water tanks and waste tanks and this battery system with our solar, we can easily uh, boondock for two weeks at a time, uh, maybe even up to as much as 16 days uh, before we have to go dump our tanks. Next to this, that bay, we have our propane. And this area, again, you can see the doors that I insulated. But this one here, I ended up reworking this. I got rid of the OEM valve system here. Uh, it had a different, it was shorter, and the hose was actually kind of getting old here. So I put on a new hose and put what they call an extend stay An extend stay allows me to just pull this plug, plug in a 12-foot extension propane hose, plug that into the back of my uh, barbecue and turn the propane on to the barbecue right here. I just love this thing and I don't have to carry around any of those little small propane bottles any of that stuff anymore. I just plug it right into here. Back here in the very last compartment on the passenger side is the generator and the first thing I did here is I installed two handles one there and one over there or to help uh, get this cover off. Otherwise I had to get my hands way up inside there and it was just very difficult. So I just said, yeah, I'm going to put a couple handles on there. So once I got the handles uh, installed on the cover, I went ahead and did a full 500 hour uh, maintenance schedule on this generator. The generator runs great. But once again, when we first got it, we didn't know what the previous owner had done maintenance-wise. And it had uh, about 980 hours or so on the generator. So not knowing what he had done, I went ahead and did the full 500 hour, which is new spark plugs, new air filter, oil change, spark arrestor needed to be cleaned underneath, did all the electrical connections, checked out everything, replaced fuel pump and the fuel filter. So, and the fuel line. Now I know I have a perfect baseline. It starts right up every time. And I know what my, my uh, maintenance schedule is from this point forward. And I did forget to mention that we have all outside tires covered with tire covers. And we put those on, if we're going to be anywhere more than about four days, we put those on. If it's just for a day or two, we don't bother putting those on. As we all know, a house 
or a coach is only as good as its foundation. And in this case, it's the chassis. And I have spent many, many hours under here making sure that everything is as good as it possibly can be. They call online, they call it the cheap handling fix. But basically what it is, it is changing the angle of these tie rods to the sway bar. Uh, Ford gives you two different hole options here that you can either put the tie rod in here or in here. But over the years, companies and individuals have come up with a great way, a, a new type of a bracket where this one here you can see is actually adjustable. I could put it here, here, or here. But this is the position I've decided to do this at. And it keeps the sway bar at a 90 degree position. And what this does for handling is it keeps that rocking side to side. Like if you, let's say you come out of a driveway and, and you know how the front of the coach will kind of dip down and it'll rock, the cab will rock side to side. This right here, this bracket, I did this on the front and the back, but this is the front. And this really takes, it, it puts some more tension on this sway bar and it really keeps the rocking from happening. All of the hoses, like these two transmission hoses right here, these cooling hoses, they did not have any anti-chafing material here. And they could potentially fail where they rub on the, the frame right here. So I put some split loom on all these cables all around here. I won't show every single one of them, but I went and threw the entire engine bay and wherever there was a hose or wire or anything that was touching that could either get hit by a lot of heat or rubbing, I put split loom to protect it. I also, to make oil changes work a lot easier, is I put this quick valve right here. And in order to do an oil change, I slip on a piece of tubing right on the end. I drop it down into my bucket. I turn the valve and I can drain that whole thing into that five gallon bucket, close off the valve, add the oil, and I'm done. Um, and then of course I've got the, the filter right there too. But this makes an oil change so easy. You don't have it pouring all over the axle and all, you know how normally you would just undo a plug and oil just gets all over everything? Not this. After a while, when you work on things, you tend to know what things mechanically will go wrong. And this is the starter and solenoid area for the hydraulic jacks. And look where it is. It's right behind that front tire. So it's going to get a lot of road spray up in there. Get on those electrical connections, corrosion, blah, blah, blah. So again, as I crawled underneath here, I spent actually a couple of weeks looking for potential problems uh, from road debris getting hitting up in there, water spray, corrosion, and all that type of thing. So I completely insulated this area to keep spray from getting in that electrical area. That's the box I explained earlier. You see that box right there where those wires are going up in there? That's the outside 12 volt um, fuse box that I totally sealed and rubberized to keep any wire, water coming from that front tire or anywhere else for that matter, getting up in there. Back here in the back on the differential, you'll see that I installed a rear track bar. And the reason I did that is again trying to stabilize this coach. This coach has a base of 228 inches. It's the second largest chassis that Ford makes. But even with this size chassis, when you're going down the road, you got a box on top of this chassis and it can be affected a lot by trucks and crosswinds and all these things. So I also did the cheap handling fix. I, I changed the angle of the sway bar to keep it from rocking so much. I did that on both sides and I also used those adjustable brackets that you see there. These are the same kind of brackets that are on the front, only these are made for the back which has a Z bar on the back 
this Z bar is which is on this side of the bar right here but it's the same premise and so with the track bar the strengthening the angle of the sway bar the safety plus on the front suspension new shocks all the way around this thing handles like a dream you can see here also that i just got through lubing the chassis i do that every oil change uh, which is about uh, every three four thousand miles i have my own uh, pneumatic grease gun air compressor and then this chassis has nine grease points so an oil change in a grease job takes me about an hour hour and a half these are our leveling jacks we have two in the front, two in the rear. I always mount them on these blocks that I made and I never use auto leveling. This is a power gear system and I've done actually a video on this on how we use these jacks. So if you wanna just look up there, you can watch that video and I'll explain all about how we level and why we do it that way. Next, right next to the uh, leveling jacks we have the stair extend the, the, the extending stair section here and I have completely worked the wires the wires here were all hanging down I went completely through this whole entire chassis and tucked all the wiring up out of the way with zip ties uh, sometimes in some cases rerouted it to where it was routed easier to work on took this whole system apart and uh, cleaned it out, re-lubed it, did all the cams, and then also added these awesome stair covers. These are awesome. They, they're, they're thick, they clean well, and they last a long time. Right next to the refrigerator area, you know, you have the hot water heater. And I've done a full video on this. Uh, you can see that up here also and click on that but once again this is a important uh, appliance i clean it out uh, every six months uh, and that video will explain all that um, but i've re i've taken this whole assembly apart cleaned this out the pilot area back in here replaced the new high pressure valve took out the nylon plug here that always strips out and put in a brass plug. Redid all the, get all the wiring up out of the way where it doesn't get wet. By the way, since we've installed our uh, water softener, uh, we don't have near the calcium and magnesium buildup in our hot water heater element uh, than we did when we didn't have it. So uh, this is just another thing about that, hot, that uh, water softener. It's a really important thing to do. They're not that expensive, and they can really save your appliances from a lot of grief. And lastly, but not least, we got bug screens on both the hot water heater, the furnace, and up under the refrigerator. These are really important things to have. Otherwise, bees and wasps and mud daubers and everything else will go up inside these areas and build nests and cause you a lot of grief. Okay, well, that covers the battery bay, the, pole, the portable solar panel, propane tank, generator, under the chassis, and a couple other things there at the end. Oh, again, please, if you like this video, it was helpful to you, give you some pointers, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps our channel. Stay tuned for part three, where Joni and I will cover the inside of the coach. That's it for now. This is RV Street. Stick around.